All right, folks, I'd like to introduce you to my latest build here. This is my Spartans 2.L. The L stands for Leonidas Edition. Um, after I modeled the, the box itself without a tweeter, I still planned on adding one at a later time because of some issues I had with some, some of my other builds. But uh, these are quite surprising and, and, and fantastic bang for the buck. You're looking at $130 total in parts and drivers. And uh, the performance to the budget ratio is pretty astounding. I've got a little wall of some of my previous little small uh, speaker attempts in the in the back here from some just uh, speaker boxes that I was doing test boxes with, um, even passive radiators, uh, a powered uh, set here. Even I tried uh, a transmission line, a Voigt transmission line, and and the one that got me in this direction here, like I said, was a single full range driver uh, ported there. But uh, re really a nice little journey here through uh, several different choices, and uh, and this uh, this new set is, is still surprising me. I was curious about the single full range driver approach, and I think some people that are new to the hobby going uh, single driver and working on filters might be a good process. Uh, small is sometimes difficult, and and some of you have done t tiny speakers before. You know what I'm talking about, just working in a small space inside of something like this or this gets it a little bit challenging. So having access uh, through a panel it makes it a little bit easier. But um, just these are all various uh, models of Mark Audio and, and Dayton Audio drivers. On the budget side for everything, I'm kind of staying in that mode. And I just wanted to get into where I was working with a small desktop size speakers near field listening and just trying to refine my ability to measure these things and work with the software and, and uh, try and get them dialed in um, to where they sound a little bit more professional. The surprise came when I worked on these Spartans just a few months ago and uh, for an $8 driver and roughly $50 total, including the wood and parts there, I got some surprising results. And so that really kicked me in the direction of what if I go a little bit bigger. Um, the main issue that I experienced, again, with small drivers is um, the audio Doppler effect. And obviously it's been around for a while to my little bit of online research there when these things were doing some high heavy bass music um the excursion would affect the mid-range and treble pretty noticeably so you get this this strong little warble warble kind of a sound in your treble and it almost sounds like a chipmunk sound when somebody is is singing and uh, other than that like i said the bass response out of something that's about the size of a cigar box uh is pretty crazy that what these things were kind of pumping out um and so my thought process was, okay was dig a little deeper how can we solve this and and go into a slightly larger package here um, the first answer was adding, making it a two way, um, adding a tweeter to it. It sounds like a lot of folks, uh, is, is why two way is so popular. Um, I had these high V, um, tweeters already in stock and, and I've played with that with an earlier model here with the berserk tweeters here. Um, but, um, trying to get it to match well with this box that I simulated in a win ISD, uh, was a challenge here, but it, it definitely helped out with, the the um the Doppler effect that I was getting from some earlier tries. I know some other folks are really into the full range driver scene and their approach tends to be with very expensive larger drivers, the uh, Lee Song and Coral seem to be common ones that people use. And evidently that also helps mitigate the the Doppler effect to some degree while the outside edge of the cone is is doing mass excursion the inside maybe is doing less but i i think going two way is where i noticed the the biggest difference once i started getting this tweeter dialed in and with the crossover um it really helped out um i was using several calculators and modeling in xm and and testing with rew and i ended up with an unusual thing at least for me first time i was i ended up with a butterworth crossover a little slight less of a slope for the tweeter and I stayed with the Linkwitz Riley kind of sharper slope for the woofer, and it seemed to actually uh, blend and and some a little better 
in the mid range there. So I was really pleased. The base again is shocking that these drivers, even though they, um, they're only two millimeter excursion, I think that also helps with the, the Doppler effect that, um, they, they produce some really deep bass here. The box is tuned to uh 45 Hertz. And I dare say I'm getting some, some good audible use of bass close to that. So re really, uh, nice, nice surprises out of a three inch driver, a one inch tweeter and a, and a box tuned the, the 45 Hertz. Uh, I did magnetic grills here. I got these uh, pretty cheap online. Uh, the only thing is they had a, a kind of a flat edge on the inside. So I just took my Dremel and, and rounded the edge and believe it or not with the REW, I measured it with the grill on and with the grill off. And the REW measurements do show that it, it actually flattens out the upper mid range a little bit better with the grill on. So uh, that worked out pretty well too. But I will um, go over the specs that I, I got from this and off axis and things like that next. And uh, I will also do a little demo of um, some base excursion showing what this port can do and probably a, a slideshow with some, some actual demos too. But I've enjoyed the build. And again, for 130 bucks, these things uh, near field to mid field, they, they will surprise you. All right, a little excursion demo of these slot ports with this three inch uh, driver and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> started this project uh, again impressed with the results I got from the Spartan uh, ones in a small box. I started with Win ISD and did some modeling. Um, I found uh, just a rough estimate um, of uh, 1.25 cubic feet for the box, still keeping it again small and, and on the desktop kind of size, tuned to 45 hertz. Um, I'll got the vents kind of computed here for a slot port and roughly seven inches for the vent, uh, and, uh, double checked on a few things that people recommend. Cone excursion looked pretty good. It starts having some trouble. It looks like right around the, the, the tuning frequency here. But again, I, it, it's minimal enough to where I wasn't too worried. And then also looked at the, um, the, airport uh, velocity, uh, rear, rear port velocity there. And, um, right around, I think it was 10 or 11. And so again, still in the safe zone, I didn't notice any chuffing or anything when I was doing my test, uh, cabinets for this. So, so overall I was kind of pleased with the way it, it turned out and when ISD got me started, um, frequent after I built the got everything up together and started doing some testing. The frequent res response was pretty impressive. Um, plus or minus probably four dB. Uh, and on this, it looks like it rolls off to that around an 80 Hertz and stuff, but this is a room mode. I've, I've tried everything I could to kind of minimize this and different uh, recording uh, distances and stuff kind of help. But this is actually, I think more of a room mode dip than anything else. But when you see the separate drivers, um, um, and how they, they, um, the, I graphed them there that they, they kind of show that this is not necessarily something that's audible, uh, missing there. Here's the separate drivers. Um, Mike is basically one millimeter away from the driver cone. So really close up the tweeter. I couldn't get quite as close cause it has a built in grill here. So this would probably be slightly higher, but Here's the, the tweeter at one millimeter, the main woofer at one millimeter, and the, the port at one millimeter here. And like I said, these sum really well. So I know the, the room mode and, and the frequent response is probably what we're seeing. And, and so this is still a, a decent amount of bass from, 
from 45 to 100 here. Um, this is what was the real problem here, trying to get these slopes right. I did all kinds of experimenting with trying different circuits, and I, I ended up with a, a Butterworth uh, second order crossover for the, the tweeter, and I kept the the Linkwitz Riley crossover second order for the woofer. And even though they're kind of a, a shallow sl slope here, they actually sum really well together. And when I started extending this one and making it a sharper slope with the third and fourth order, it really peaked things up to where uh, it didn't uh, blend really well. So unusual circuit for me. I've never done done uh, anything like that before, and, and it seemed to actually sum really well. The off-axis... Uh, really first time I'm getting too much into this, but um, here is the own axis. Here's the 15 degree, 30 and 45. Um, again, to try and knock out the room modes this is at, I think I did these at, um, at 12 inches at one foot away. Um, the best I got, I think, was probably between um, 15 and 10 degrees. If you tow these out away from the listener, 10 to 15 degrees, you're going to get an even a little bit more flat response here in the upper high treble here. But overall, it seems to be kind of tapering down in a very similar fashion. There's a little bit bigger gap between 15 and, and 30 degrees, but overall, it looks pretty normal. The grills, I, I made these little magnetic uh, grills um, assuming that I was going to have to take these off anyway and, and play my speakers with the grills off here. But the testing actually did show the difference there that um, the purple trace is the without grills and the blue trace is with grills. And actually the blue trace looks a little better, even though it has a couple of little peaks in here. Overall in this um, upper mid-range section right here, it actually levels it off a little bit better by a dB, a dB and a half in some areas. So with the grills it actually does smooth out some of, some of the, um, the, the upper mid-range or lower travel there. I will close out with a, a, a demo or two of the, um, the Spartans playing probably um, five or six feet away. I did notice that um, close near field, um, you were losing a little bit of the base. It was like you were in a null for the base. If you back up to a five or six feet away, you get in a nice sweet spot where you really feel the full impact of these guys. And so um, I hope you enjoy. I definitely have enjoyed this project. One more thing that was kind of interesting when I was doing my modeling and XM and, and other calculators is when I was using the, the second order crossovers, especially Linquist Riley, they recommend inverting the polarity of the tweeter. And I did, I did test this, this, the um, teal trace here is with the tweeter inverted polarity. And then the purple traces with it in normal polarity. Um, I don't know if the, it's the fact that I was using a, a Butterworth and a combination Linkwitz for the woofer, but it definitely measured better and the phase looked better uh, with it in normal polarity. But again, still learning on uh, on some of the do's and don'ts of this, but this is one of those cases where the regular polarity with the second order actually was a better response. Thank you.